My name is Chris and today we're going to go over five quality turntables under $500. This is the Vinyl Attack. Attack! Affordable turntables are a constant topic that goes through periodic changes as companies introduce new and improved products to the market. For many newer hobbyists, it can be a bit confusing to find out where to start when it comes to buying a new turntable that is not only affordable, but reliable. It can also be the same for people who have a starter table and are looking for a modest upgrade. My aim is to simplify this task with five quality turntables that will get you up and running with little to no hassles so you can go and enjoy your record collection. This video will be a bit longer, so I've broken it up into chapters for those of you who want to skip ahead and ruin the surprise. Also, before we get into the list, we need to discuss quickly two relative topics. The first is the ongoing argument about Crosleys, Victrolas, and the host of cheap, low-quality qual turntables that flood the market, making your buying decisions that much harder. For the simplicity of moving along in this video, let's just cut to the chase. These players are not worth your time or money. They're poorly made and can indeed damage your records just by regular, normal usage. I'm not trying to insult anyone who has one of these machines, but I am trying to educate as many people as possible so they can avoid them in the future. I'll have a full video on this topic soon, but in the meantime, please, just trust me on this. The other quick thing to clear up is about playback speed. Yes, technically, the proper number for the standard LP playback speed is 33 and a third, but in this review, I will refer to the base speed of these turntables as 33. This is standard lingo, and I really just don't want to say, and a third all the time. Now that I'm sure you've clicked on the subscribe button, here are five turntables that I recommend for under $500 that are worth your money. Number one, the Audio-Technica ATLP60 series. At the time of this video, there are three turntables in the ATLP60 range. All three models are identical, other than a couple of key features that I will mention coming up, along with their respective prices. Otherwise, the information reviewed next applies to all three. The ATLP60 is a no frills belt driven player, so a belt attaches to a motor mounted separately from the platter in order to spin it, that aims to be a simple, all in one solution. It can be found pretty much anywhere, and I've seen them in stores like Target and Best Buy, as well as my local record store and every major online retailer who would carry a turntable. It has 33 and 45 speeds that are selected by a push button with manual and fully automatic operation, which can be handy if you get distracted and forget to stop the record at the end. The automatic feature only works with 12 and 7 inch records, however, so bear that in mind if you have any 10 inch records in your collection. You'll need to cue those up by hand. There's a built in phono preamp, so you don't have to worry about buying any additional gear to hook your turntable to your stereo. It does, however, feature an option that will let you bypass this preamp if you'd like to use an outboard one. However, at this price point, I really wouldn't recommend spending money on that. You could just go buy more records. It comes with a dust cover, a felt mat to go on the platter, a 45 adapter for the records that might need it, and the necessary cables to power and connect it to a stereo. It also includes an attached moving magnet cartridge that isn't junk and its stylus can easily be replaced. While not a completely replaceable cartridge, there are several offerings of style available and they're all very affordable. A huge benefit over the cheap record players you see constantly. It weighs in at just under 6 pounds, and it isn't large by any turntable standards, so you can kind of put it anywhere you'd like if you have flat space available. Setup for this player is quick and easy. You won't need any tools, and it shouldn't take you longer than 5 minutes after unboxing to have it up and running. For all of its good though, there are some trade-offs. The build quality of this turntable isn't what you'd call a sturdy monster. It's all plastic, and it feels that way. The buttons don't offer you a quality feel, and you will experience some play in them. If you have young ones who may take to trying to use this, you may be careful about its lack of durability. If you treat your equipment with care, however, I wouldn't stress this too much. It also doesn't have adjustable feet, so you want to make sure it's on as level a surface as possible for proper tracking and the wow and flutter is a little high at 0.25%. They claim the aluminum platter is anti-resonance, but you will hear ringing if you hold it in one hand and knock on it with the other. When it's playing on the spindle and playing with a mat on it, however, you probably shouldn't hear any unnecessary sound in its playback. As for the differences in models, after the base model, the ATLP60X, which is priced at $119, the 60X USB simply adds USB connectivity and comes in at $129. The top of the line is the 60XBT, which includes the USB of the mid-tier model and includes Bluetooth for wireless connectivity at $149. 
The second turntable on my list is also an Audio-Technica, and it has two different variations. It's the ATLP120XUSB and the ATLP120XBTUSB. Thankfully, the turntables after this on the list are a little lighter on the letters and numbers in the model name. Like the LP60, the only differences here are the XUSB has USB connectivity, no big surprise, and you've probably guessed that the XBT USB has not only USB, but Bluetooth options. They're priced at $279 and $299, respectively. So what makes the increased cost here an improvement over the last turntable we discussed? Well, quite a bit, actually. This is a direct drive turntable, as opposed to a belt drive, which means the motor is attached directly under the platter, which spins it when it's placed down on the table. This creates a faster start and stop when the button is pushed, and its wall and flutter performance are a bit better at 0.2%. But, much more than that is the build quality. This is a far more substantial piece of equipment. It's almost triple the weight of the LP60 at nearly 18 pounds, and you can feel the increase in the build quality in every dial, button, and switch here. The tone arm has a removable head shell to make it easier to change cartridges, which is an additional upgrade. You can put almost any cartridge you'd like on this player to dial in a sound that makes you happy. There is a learning curve, though, for replacing cartridges and setting up a turntable, but we're going to have to save that for another video. Its S-shaped tone arm connects to an adjustable assembly, letting you dial in many more specifics than the LP60, such as a counterweight to set the tracking force and an anti-skate dial to help with tracking balance. It also has adjustable feet, so you can level the player more accurately and put it in better places. Like its younger sibling, the LP60, it contains a built-in phono preamp and additionally comes with a USB cable, an RCA cable with a ground wire to attach to an external phono preamplifier if desired, the counterweight, a felt mat, dust cover, and a 45 adapter. The fully detailed manual also contains useful information that can apply to many different turntables as well as its intended one, so it's worth a read. Moving on to number three is the very easy to pronounce Fluence RT83. This starts to mark the difference between a starter table and something that is a little more. This belt-driven player has a solid MDF plinth, which helps to reduce vibration along with its overall weight of 15 pounds, and it's wrapped in an attractive real wood veneer with three color combinations, a bamboo, a walnut, and a gloss black. It has an interesting semi-automatic feature that means you need to manually cue up the tone arm to put it in place, but once the record is done, the platter will stop spinning so as to not damage the stylus from continual wear. The Wow and Flutter are listed at 0 0.07, which is fantastic, but it lists its speed variation at 0.13, which brings us back to the 0.2% the last Audio-Technica had. Most turntables I'm familiar with don't list those two items separately, they list one or the other. From there, though, the difference in quality really starts to make itself known. An Ortofon 2M Red cartridge is included, and this is a far superior option than the other tables I've listed thus far. That alone will take your listening experience from a nice casual item in the room to something that you can actually listen and hear detail, separation, and dynamics. This is where the analog sound starts to come in and really makes this hobby fun. The motor isolation is better, its feet do more to separate vibrations from the player, and utilizes only three feet instead of four, making it more stable. It has gold-plated RCA connectors, and the tone arm assembly is simpler but better build quality. This piece in hand just feels like it has that more of a real turntable in my opinion. Those upgrades, however, come with a need for more commitment to the hobby. There is no built-in phonal preamp here, so you either need to buy one or have one built into your stereo. At the risk of cutting out an entire video's worth of reviewing, just get the shit, Manny. For $150, bucks, you are not going to find anything that sounds nearly as good anywhere at that price. I'll link it below, along with all the other items here that we discuss. They do, however, include a nice dust cover, a rubber platter mat, and the necessary RCA cables to hook up to your phono preamp. Include the $100 cost of what a 2M Red would be separately, and this $350 table really starts to show its value. From there, we make another sizable jump to the final two recommendations. At number four is the ubiquitous Riga Planer 1. This turntable has been around in some form or another for many years, and there are several very good reasons for that. For one, the tone arm. Riga is renowned for its quality-built tone arms that supply not only their turntables, but those of manufacturers all over the world. The Planer 1 boasts that this new arm is so precise that it has bearings that are patent-pending. Its bias adjustment is preset, so you can use the included and quite capable Riga Carbon Moving Magnet cartridge right out of the box, and you don't need to worry about anti-skate. The counterweight is pre-marked as well, so it's much easier for you to adjust it if necessary to get the proper tracking force, and its 24-volt motor drives out a new advanced drive belt for speed stability. 
While Riga didn't list the player's WoW and Flutter for some reason, some independent testing has found it to be right around 0.11 to 0.13%, an excellent performance to keep your music from experiencing any warble or irregularities in its sound. It comes with a felt mat, and I much prefer the phenolic resin platter over the aluminum ones listed before, as it eliminates any ring or reverberations, keeping the playback more accurate and less colored with no vibration. You'll also find in the box a dust cover, which starts to get more and more rare as the prices climb. The overall weight is just over 9 pounds, but Riga has a different theory about weight and purposefully doesn't make a heavy turntable. It instead focuses on vibration reduction. The gloss black and gloss white finish are classic choices that won't steer you wrong no matter what your furniture looks like, if you even care about that sort of thing. And underneath that color, you'll find their new thermoset laminated plinth to help reduce vibrations from reaching your tone arm. Do you see the pattern here? No vibrations, better performance. You'll again need to supply your own phono preamp, but at these prices, that's expected as they try to keep the budget aimed at the performance of the table and less on its outboard connectivity. Adding up all the quality features and its ease of setup out of the box, and you'll find that a price of $475 is a fantastic deal and a choice that will keep you enjoying your records for years to come. And if you're in Europe, these can be found for even less as their headquarters are in England. The last turntable on my recommended 5 under 5 list is a newer contender, and has recently ousted the until now leading budget choice, the Riga Planer 1, and it is the Project Debut Carbon Evo. At $499. I'm claiming in public right now that you will not find a better turntable for the price, especially if you live in the U.S. While Europe, and especially England, may get a discount on the Planer 1, we get the Sumoco Rainier cartridge mounted on the project, while the rest of the world gets the Ornithon 2M Red. So you're probably thinking, hey, I thought you said the 2M Red is good. It absolutely is. But given the choice, I'd take the Sumoco. I prefer its overall tonality, and I find it to have a bit more clarity and bass response. The fact that it's $50 more expensive than the 2M Red, and I just kind of like the additional value here. This is another belt drive turntable that has speeds of 33 and 45, but you can add 78 speed for an additional upcharge. Personally, I'd skip that option unless you actually have 78s lying around the house and a cartridge to match them. It claims a wow and flutter performance of 0.17, which is just a bit outside of the, what Riga is expecting, but it's still an excellent parameter. The overall weight is just over 12 pounds, much of which can be contributed to its steel platter coming in at almost 4 pounds all by itself. The added weight increases the spin stability, and it also includes a thermoplastic elastomer ring, or TPE ring, mounted on the underside to help dampen any resonance found. The name Carbon isn't just for marketing either. This turntable sports an 8.6 inch, one piece carbon fiber tone arm. Carbon fiber by nature is incredibly strong, stiff, and light, which we probably know, but it is an ideal material to use in tone arm construction. Just the look of this piece exudes a quality build, and I personally find it very attractive. You again have gold-plated RCA sockets, and they've included RCA cables that are low capacitance with excellent shielding to get you up and running while keeping out unwanted noise and interference. You will also get the added benefit of a dust cover. I know, I keep bringing this up, but when you start getting into the higher price tables and the dust covers cost extra, believe me, it starts to become a thing. Setup here is pretty straightforward, but you may want to slow down and go over the instructions twice when it comes to setting up the anti-skate. This player has more of a traditional weight and line system, which can look pretty intimidating to a newer collector, but thankfully, the setup on this one is pretty straightforward. I could go on and on about the high-end materials, the new motor suspension system, or the three heavy-duty metal adjustable feet, but I really want to talk about the color options here. This thing looks freaking great. Sure, color shouldn't matter when it comes to the performance of a product, but when you already have the quality, why not dress it up? It has nine color options, from real wood and gloss to my personal favorite of five satin finishes. When you set this up in your listening area, you'll enjoy looking at it even when it's not playing. There's an age-old adage that says, not only do you listen with your ears, but also with your eyes. I find that statement to be pretty much the truth. And I'm happy that there are so many color choices here because I like a really good-looking product. It makes me want to play it, and it makes me want to show it off. And that's it. That's the list. Five great choices for under $500. Do you have any of these? Are you planning on picking one up? Let me know in the comments. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. And if you stuck around this long, I'm going to include two honorable mentions that you may want to check out. The U-Turn Orbit and the Pioneer PLX 500. 
The Orbit is a well-built, no-frills, entry-level player that starts at $179 and has multiple options going up in its price range. The Pioneer is another direct-drive turntable that at $349 may have a look that you would prefer to go along with its very solid build. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and please, hit the like button. It seriously takes under a second, and it really goes a long way to help the channel grow so I can continue to buy more gear and get it in-house for review. Until then, I look forward to next time.